So welcome to part two of the Polaroid transfer tutorial. This is a little more advanced tutorial. It will show you how to take full advantage of the different layers that are in the templates. And it'll give you some ideas of how to play with them, how to experiment, and how to take advantage of them. So uh, this picks up right where we left off from the first tutorial. And this is where we're going to end up when we're finished. So I'm going to jump in right where I left off at the end of the first uh, basic tutorial on how to use the Polaroid transfer and grunge border templates. Uh, the first thing I want to show you that's a little more advanced would be just controlling the layers themselves. And in the first tutorial I covered this a little bit, but you have an image uh, texture layer. You can easily just turn that off and on. And you can change the blend mode on that. Uh, I've picked Color Dodge because it seemed to work best, but um, you certainly can try different ones. You can go in and, and experiment with that and see. Um, and so, some of them are going to look a little more Polaroid-like than others. Something else that I wanted to show you that you can do with this texture is, uh, let's say that you do like the texture in this case, but you've decided, hey, that's just too much texture for the face, but I, I don't mind it in the other areas of the image. So what you can do is you can take this image texture and add a layer mask to it. And um, if you have your uh, foreground set to black here and grab a brush and the brush, um, you might want to make the brush larger or smaller depending on your taste, but I'm going to make kind of a large brush just to get a soft edge. And I'm just going to paint uh, or mask that texture off of the face and um, kind of soften it around the edges but I'm gonna go ahead and let it stay in the other areas so now I've kinda of taken it off the face and, and kept it uh, intact in some of the other image areas the other thing I, I covered briefly in the first tutorial is that there's a watercolor um, texture that is added and it's set to multiply let me zoom in and we can take a look at that again a bit better over here I'm gonna increase the opacity of that to 100% so you can see it real well. Uh, basically you can do the same thing that we just did to the face uh, for the um, texture, for the Polaroid texture, the grungy texture. We could also do that for the watercolor. What you'd want to do is come in and add a uh, layer mask to the watercolor layer and then it, we have that selected here. I'm going to grab my brush paint it on the face. So I'm, I'm removing that watercolor texture from the, the face in this case because I, I've decided that's just a little bit too too much um, adjustment in the skin tone. So I just want to roll that out. Um, and you could adjust your brush instead of being 100% black. You could maybe go in and do a little bit gray if you wanted a little bit of the texture in the face uh, and then more of the texture to the sides where it's or you're not masking it off. So you can do uh, the same thing with the uh, watercolor layer. Another thing I want to show you um, regarding the watercolor paper layer is that this is set up as a pattern overlay. So again I'm going to zoom in. So you can see we have uh, this texture and this texture is set up as a pattern overlay. So if you click on this, double click on, on the pattern overlay uh, um, effect then um, you can come in and make adjustments here we can adjust the scale so we can make it smaller finer a finer looking watercolor or just texture if you if you will or we can increase that so we can have our, a rougher or larger texture this is also another area where you could come in and, and play with the blend modes and just see what kind of effects you get so you can see you can do that and um, you can move this up and down We'll just put this back around 50. And you could, if you have your own, you could uh, feasibly load your own pattern in and, and create your own um, effect or your own paper or overlay effect if you like. So I'm just going to cancel that. So that's how um, that watercolor texture works. And of course you can just turn that off if you don't like it, if it's too much. Um, just remove that. Now I want to show how to adjust the grunge borders. How would you adjust the color of those? Well, I've got those two borders set up 
uh, in um, layer groups here and there's a second a first and a second texture layer and just to make this kind of a little clearer I'm going to turn the second one off and I'm going to toggle down the first one so you can see what's in here there's an adjustment layer that is also a clipping mask that is set to this color and what this allows you to do the the texture is set to a, a gray by default it's also set to multiply so that's why it looks slightly yellow because it's picking up the background here we'll just turn we'll turn this base saturation off and we'll go back to that in just a moment and we'll look at that too um, so it's a 50 percent gray we turn on our adjustment layer with a clipping mask and it's only affecting just that grunge border now, if you want to change the color of that just double click on here we get our adjustment layer up here and let's just say we want to make that kind of a, a pink color so we move our hue over maybe you want it to be a little more saturated maybe I'm trying to match the the lips a little bit and then we can do the exact same thing with the second grunge uh, if we want a slightly different red or maybe we want to do something that's completely different again I'm just gonna double click on the hue and saturation adjustment and uh, I think I might go with something blue and maybe bright um, light blue so you can kinda of play with that and you can see what I'm doing is by adjusting the lightness the saturation and the hue I can kind of uh, just play with this I basically can get any color that I want uh, by playing with this back and forth so you can kinda of see um, that this gives you the full spectrum of what you might want to um, have in your image so that's how those work and those all on all of the templates uh, basically work the same way one other thing if you want to get a little um, adventurous here you could apply a um, color or a hue to the image texture I'm just gonna I'm going to do this very simply. I'm going to actually grab the hue and saturation from my first texture edge and I'm going to option or control click on that. I'm going to drag it down here to just above my image texture. Now it impacted the entire image here. What I want to do is I want that to be a clipping mask. Sorry, I didn't have that. I needed to get that below that layer group. And then I want to create a clipping mask. Now, um, cover this up. If you can see here what I've done, here is the image texture. This is the hue and saturation that I copied from above. And I've dropped it down here and created a clipping mask. And now I'm applying that color to the interior grunge of the image so now you can get some other colors inside of the image if you'd like to do that as well and you can of course play with the different um, blend modes to see what kind of effects you get with that so you can get all kinds of interesting grungy effects with this so that gives you a little bit of an idea and if you decide you don't like that you can just turn that off as well something else that you might run into I'm gonna turn this uh, layer back on I'm gonna remove my image for a moment and uh, if you're working with these templates are set up as portrait but if you're working with a um, landscape type image horizontal very easy to uh, convert this just go to file I'm sorry go to image image rotation and then you can either rotate it 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise now my template is landscape or horizontal and we could go back in to our image and drop it back in here as a horizontal and I again I was kinda already had that targeted because I was on the right layer but if you needed to you could move it to the right location now since this was a more of a landscape orientation image there's a little bit more to the image 
than you were seeing before, but you can see you could very easily change the orientation of the uh, template so that you can make that work for you. Something else that I want to show is each template has a different image texture. And this, this is the one that we've been working with. You can see that here. So I'm going to go and open up one of the other ones. We'll open up the Polaroid Transfer Template D. And if you want, th this is a little bit different, maybe a little more subtle in some ways um, texture. What you could do is you could grab this texture. I'm going to turn the auto, I'm going to make sure I have auto layer select turned off. I'm going to grab, or I'm going to click on this image texture. I have auto select layer turned off. So I know that I have that layer. I'm going to click down and drag up to the tab. And I'm going to drop that texture onto the template I was working on before. Now, when I targeted that, you can see it dropped the image texture not in the ideal place where I want it. So I'm going to actually move it up to um, where just above the original image texture. And I'm also going to release the clipping mask because it, when I dropped it in there, it applied one automatically. So let's turn off the image texture that came with that particular template. And now you can see that I've got a different kind of grunge. And let's just turn this to normal so you can actually see what it looks like. Now, because I dragged that in from a template that was uh, portrait oriented, I am going to have to rotate that. So I'm going to click on the uh, Control or Command T and transform, just rotate this. And because it's, it was a different template, I'm going to have to size it a little bit differently as well. So come in and now these these textures you you can be pretty. Uh, inaccurate with them if you want because it because of what they are they don't really desire perfection I guess I could say <laughs> um, so I've got that kind of size of the image and I can go back up and I can start playing with my um, blend modes and I can uh, adjust my opacity might want a lot of it might not want very much if I want a lot but I don't want it on the face I can go back in add a mask this is what we just did before I'm going to paint in on the face so that I can remove the texture, maybe from the body a little bit. And so you can you can mix and match these templates. You could also do the same thing with the with the uh, grungy borders. You can mix and match these. They they don't have to one go with the other per se. Uh, you can kind of play around with them and mix them up. So you really really have with the different templates in each one having a little bit different Polaroid grunge border to them, you really can mix these and match these and come up with literally thousands of combinations. One other thing I wanted to show you, uh, again, if you wanted to have some kind of base color to your transfer, I have set up a hue adjustment down here at the bottom just below a white base. If you don't want that, you can certainly just turn that off and then you have your white uh, base here for this setup. And this Again, is adjusted just the same way as the other one uh, that we looked at before, the hue and saturation adjustment. You can come in here and slide this around to different colors. So hopefully you found this uh, advanced tutorial on the Polaroid transfer grunge borders helpful. And uh, if you didn't understand something, you might want to check back on the first tutorial and see if it was covered there. There's also a third tutorial which will show some advanced techniques on how to utilize the uh, Polaroid grunge brushes that are also included with this product. So I hope you check out all of those tutorials. Check out the uh, Photoshop Island Polaroid Transfer Grunge Border templates and all of our other products. Thanks for stopping by.